Okay, so you get sentenced, and at that point, you got sent to Folsom Prison? No, I went to Tracy first. I went to Chino as the reception center. That's in Chino, California. And then I was scheduled to go to San Quentin, but uh, they didn't have the bed space, so they uh, diverted me over to Tracy. That's a dual vocational institution in Tracy, California. Okay, so how long after Tracy did you end up going to Folsom? Okay, so I was at Tracy two years, and then I was um, special transport to Old Folsom Prison. And I arrived there, I think the end of 77. Um, went to the hole. Uh, I wasn't on the main line. I went into their... Um, back then, they didn't have a security housing unit. It was just the hole. And so that's where I was housed. Okay. So you come into prison, originally at Tracy, like you said, and you're 6'4", you could bench 600 pounds. Eventually. So you're a fairly big guy. Yeah. I weighed, um, at that time, I weighed 285. I eventually went up to 310, and I wasn't lifting uh, twice my body weight at that time, 620. Eventually, I did. Uh, but at that time, I was hitting over 400 pounds. Okay, so you're a big, strong guy. I am. Essentially. Now, there was a situation that happened where uh, the Nuestra Familia, uh, a.k.a. the Nortenos, yes. uh, attacked you? Well, no, it wasn't really the Nuestra Familia that attacked me. What it was, was um, essentially Border Brothers, what they call Border Brothers. Uh, now they have an organization that they call Pisces. But um, back then, they were what was considered by the Nuestra Familia as um, expendables. So it was a situation where I worked in the chapel, that was my first job, and um, for maintaining the chapel, uh, I was given the garden between the two chapels to practice my Native American spirituality. And um, in so doing, you want to remember that it was against the law to do that back then. We weren't uh, able to practice our ways, nor were we able to speak our language. And uh, But the chaplain, I made a deal with the chaplain. He was a very open-minded individual. And um, he allowed me to use the garden to practice my ways which I did, I was practicing my ways out there, and the priest in the Catholic chapel across from the Protestant chapel took issue with what I was doing. He considered it um, devil worship. And I think that uh, was probably because not very much was known about um, native practices at that time. So he sees a big white boy out in his garden uh, doing things that are contrary to his covenants and tenets, and um, I think he complained uh, to his parishioners, some of whom were Nuestra Familia, and then the Nuestra Familia made arrangements to have um, these kids attack me in the garden, attempt to kill me, actually, in the garden. Okay, and how bad was that attack? Well, um, not very. Um, there was seven of them, and they had knives that the knives they had are usually used for um, neck shots. They're called neck pieces. The boot factory is located in Tracy. And back then when they made boots, they used to put a spring steel piece of um, a, a bar um, in the arch of the boots. And it was about uh, four to five inches long. So they would take that, then they would draw that back on both sides, put a handle on it, and it made an excellent neck piece but uh, it really wasn't good for anything other than that. I mean, you could po poke some holes in an individual, but that's about it. But these individuals, um, you know, they, um, they weren't trained. They didn't know what they were doing. They actually had the pieces taped into their hands. And the only time you do that is when you're either afraid of losing it or having it taken away from you. And um, so they'd come out the side door. I was out in the garden practicing my ways. And... Um, um, the point man, um, they formed a wedge coming out the door, and the point man, um, once I realized what was happening, I just simply um, knocked him out and um, rolled away from the rest that were coming out, and they kind of keystone cop fumbled out the door out into the, out into the yard. Um, these were not individuals, like I said, that were 
Um, I've heard people say, oh, trained assassins. No, they weren't. They were, they were um, what, like I said, the New Western Familia calls expendables. And um, I doubt very seriously if they'd ever held a knife before. Um, so, and I doubt very seriously if they'd ever been in a fight in their life. But um, so, no, this, this was, when you say, you know, was it a serious situation? Certainly I took it seriously, and certainly they were trying to kill me. And um, so I, I dealt with it accordingly. And this happened at Folsom? No, this happened to Tracy. That's actually, Tracy. What, this actually what led to me going to Folsom. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, so that situation sent you to Folsom? It was one of, uh, of a couple situations. Um, there was a major altercation on the yard. And um, same day that I was also involved in. So I went from the garden setting. It was a lieutenant that opened the door and told me that uh, the people that had ordered my killing, the Nuestra Familia, were out on the yard as an alibi um, when I was going to be murdered. So um, he let me out to the main yard. And in conjunction with that, there were some, um, there were a couple of bikers I knew that were taking issue on behalf of another individual that had been threatened by the, by the NF. So the three of us, and perhaps there were a few more, we went out to the yard, um, picked up a few baseball bats, and um, <clears throat> began to um, handle those individuals uh, on the yard. And it was only after shots fired that uh, that was stopped. I was placed into the hole, let out two weeks later with no charges, um, pretty much set up in the unit, got into another altercation, and um, so smuggled a gun into the prison uh, with a box of shells and made a, um, a um, what amounts to a silencer. Um, but it, it's not really a silencer because it was a revolver. But um, it suppresses the sound somewhat. So I was charged with a suppressor, but they never found the gun. They never found the, the cartridges. And uh, as a result, they put me in a car and took me up to Old Folsom so that... Uh, the old guard up at Old Folsom could convince me to tell them where the gun was at. Okay, one, once you got to Folsom, was that when gangs started to try to recruit you? It is, yeah. The first to recruit me was um, Hugo Yogi Pinnell. He was their leader of the Black Panthers at that time. Um, he's oftentimes confused with the Black Rella family, but he was not a member of the Black Rella family. You had to be black to be a member of the Black Rella family. He was Nicaraguan. But uh, he'd been with um, the Black Panthers since about 1970. He'd just come from San Quentin, where he and George Jackson had taken over the Adjustment Center and uh, cut the throats of guards and white inmates there. Uh, Jackson was killed, but uh, Yogi wasn't, so he was sent to Folsom. So he had the yard at Folsom, and he was in the hole, and he approached me. What had happened at Tracy preceded me via the inmate grapevine. And uh, so he approached me and attempted to recruit me into the Black Panthers. I mean, were there any white people in the Black Panthers? Well, I don't know that there was or wasn't. Um, I, I know at one time they established what they called the White Panthers, but um, I don't think that actually that they discriminated. Um, I think that if you were down for their cause, um, then you, know, you were recruited and used in whatever capacity that uh, they saw fit. So, like I said, Yogi was Nicaraguan. He wasn't black. Um, and perhaps that answers your question. But uh, Okay, well, you ended up not joining the Black Panthers. I, that's and... true. I declined Yogi's um, attempt to recruit me. Mm -hmm. And instead, you ended up joining the Aryan Brotherhood, a.k.a. the AB. Uh, eventually, I did, yes. I was approached by T.D. Bingham at that time, and uh, he attempted to recruit me. And uh, when he did, I declined. Um, at that time, I was still fighting uh, members of the Black Panthers and the BGF, usually pretty much every time I went to the yard. And in the time that I was at Folsom, I was in uh, 18 knife fights, and I'd been uh, shot um, numerous times with um, M14 shotgun, and uh, one time with a 30 6 as a result of those knife fights. But eventually I did... Um, join the Aryan Brotherhood, yes. Okay. And, I mean, the Aryan Brotherhood is considered a very racist organization. 
I mean, in fact, the Anti-Defamation League calls it the oldest and most notorious racist prison gang in the United States. Well, the Anti-Defamation League is um, correct in part. I think that could probably be said now. But back then in the 70s, uh, I don't believe that was true. Um, the people that actually recruited me into the Aryan Brotherhood were Native American. And the four of them were members. Um, so, you know, the racism doesn't hold. T.D. Bingham, who attempted to recruit me at first, uh, is Jewish. Um, you know, people say, well, he's only half Jewish. Um, but his mother was Jewish, and he's Jewish, and he wears a Star of David on his, on his body with pride. And, um, but he's not a practicing Jew, which is, to me, irrelevant. But back then, the idea of the Aryan Brotherhood, along with uh, the Black Panthers and the Black Guerrilla Family and the Nuestra Familia and the Texas Syndicate and the Mexican Mafia were all about controlling their resources. Racism was not high on the ticket. It isn't to say, Vlad, that you didn't have racists within the organization, as you did in every organization. But um, it, it creates a problem, I think, when we talk about the history of the Aryan Brotherhood or any other organization in so far as racism. Um, certainly now, uh, they should be considered uh, right up there um, with uh, hate groups and um, uh, the quintessential racist organization. Um, but that was an evolving uh, process over the last um, 40 years or so.